Uh, I haven't eaten nothing yet, so that boy better not get no stuff. All right, all right. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to our Tuesday evening live crypto talk, late night crypto talk. Bitcoin Brandon from Los Angeles, California. It's a new year. First day of 2019. Go ahead and type your name, where you're listening to in the chat box, and make sure you hit the thumbs up button for YouTube. Good evening, Tracy, Tony Pinkston, getting Ron from Charlotte, Diana from Delaware, Bridget. New Jersey. As a disclaimer, I'm not a licensed financial advisor to be giving financial advice. I read the news, give my opinion, share suggestions, and it is up to you to make an informed, intelligent decision on which direction you want to move into. There's four rules I live by in the crypto space to have success. Rule number one, education is key. Education is everything. Rule number two, Never invest money you cannot afford to lose. Rule number three, always get your return on investment back as fast as possible. And rule number four, where do you see yourself in three months, six months, a year from now? What are you willing to do to make it happen? What vehicle are you using to work in? Make a decision, take action, and remain focused. Do not get distracted. There's so many things out there that can distract you in the space. You have limited resources. Now, following this is not going to guarantee you success, but it will at least minimize your risk. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the most that we can ask for. Let's go ahead and get things kicked off here with my screen share. Hope you guys have enjoyed today. I've been busy all day, watched a couple of football games, but doing some work preparing for this new year. Let me see here. And screen share. All right, let's see, has the market done anything since this morning? Good evening, Jacqueline. 
Mr. Stewart. All right, we've got uh, coin market cap is at 129 billion. So it, was, it has gained 3 billion since this morning. It was 126 billion. Bitcoin dominance at 51%. Bitcoin is up to 38, 36. Good, I made some money. I got a, a long hold I'm doing right now as far as my day trading. I've been sitting on this trade for about a week. Uh, Ripple is at 2.8%. For those of you who know, I got a sell order at 4,050. That will give me about a 16% profit that, that, that pops off. So I've been sitting on that long. Ethereum, Bitcoin Cash, Ripple and Bitcoin and Ethereum are about to, they're real close and they're going to flip the tour, second and third position. 14.7 billion, 14.6 billion. They're just literally about 100 million off from each other. Top performers last 24 hours. Dex, and this is interesting because um, I know some of you guys have been noticing uh, uh, Paragon coin at one point was up 7,000%. Then this morning it was down to 1,600%. Let me see if that has changed because I couldn't tell if it was a glitch or a pump and dump. Paragon, what is it doing now? It's up 113%. So uh, uh, I think that was a that was a pump and dump where it went boom, sky high, came down, bounced a bit, came back down, now it's flatlined again. So somebody made some good money around here. Those that were on it and able to move quickly. Uh, but let's see, the other top performers, Ravine, Bitcoin SV is up 7%. Bitcoin Cash is up 6%. Ethereum, 5%. So you remember when we talked about the trading, you can make more money trading the other coins than on Bitcoin. Bitcoin is only up 2.5%. So you'd have made more money on these other coins. If you're paying attention to them. Worst performers in the top 20 waves. Uh, not too many. Flat line there. So the market is in the upward momentum right now, which is which is good. Take a look at some news. Crypto traders enter the new year with uncertainty. Let's put that here. Isn't that interesting, Ron? Yo, bit wouldn't let you sell any of the coins. Yeah, because they knew something. Something was fishy. Something was going on. Coinbase is good for doing that too. They do it far more often. Freeze your trades. On the first day of 2019, cryptocurrency prices have been steadily moving sideways in a consolidated pattern after taking some slight losses on New Year's Eve. At the moment, the entire digital asset economy is worth about $126 billion and global trade volume has been thinning out over the last 48 hours. 2018 is over and many cryptocurrency enthusiasts are hoping the bearish sentiment that lasted all year long is left behind as well. I don't think so. I think it's gonna continue for a couple more months. Trade volume has been light over the last two days, which is likely due to traders celebrating the holidays. It's likely that heavier digital asset trading will resume at some point today. Interesting, you hear that? This article came out nine hours ago. And, it's, and at that time, Bitcoin was at $3,600 a coin. So here it says, it's likely that heavier digital trading will resume at some point today and into the new year. Well, that happened. We see the market has added $3 billion today. At the moment, who, wait, who wrote this? Jamie Ray, he's pretty good. Let's see. At the moment, global trade volume for all 2,000 plus assets this Tuesday is around $12.8 billion. Bitcoin Core is trading for 37.43 and is down 1.5% on January 1st. It's up now. The last seven days show BTC is also down a small percentage and trade volume is around 4.2 billion. The second largest market cap held by Ripple, down 1% today and 5.9% for the week. 
One Ripple is trading for 35 cents. What is it at right now? Nine hours ago, that's what it was. Right now it's 0.36 cents. So let's see, I'm gonna lose my place. 1.6 cents, uh, that's, yeah, Ripple down 1%, 5.9% for the week. 35 cents is up one penny. Ripple's overall market valuation is 14.4 billion. It's at 14.7 right now. Ethereum had a decent run up last week as the crypto is still up 5% over the last seven days, but it's down 1.6% today. One ETH is trading for $135 and the total market cap is awfully close to Ripple's. Yep. But at 135 and uh, nine hours ago, it is now $140. So Ethereum gained $5 today. EOS is having a better day than most. Even though the currency is down 0.63% today, it was up 2.7% for the week. At the time of publication, a single EOS is swapping for 258 per coin. Bitcoin Cash is seeing some improvement on the first day of the year, but prices are down 0.64% over the last 24 hours. Bitcoin Cash is also still down over 4% for the week. And trade volume is much lower than last week's data with only $250 million today. One Bitcoin Cash is trading for $156. Right now it's at 165. That's the good money made there. You are trading on Bitcoin Cash. See the top five exchanges swapping the most Bitcoin Cash is L Bank, Binance, Huobi, HitBTC, and Coinbase. A list of currency pair statistics shows that USDT is dominating Bitcoin Cash trades by 42.4% today, which means is Tether uh, is being traded on paired up with Bitcoin Cash more than any, anyone else. I, I finally watched a video today that, that uh, uh, what's his name, uh, Da Vinci did a couple of days ago, I think it was last week on Thursday where he basically was stating that the altcoins have hit bottom. Bitcoin hasn't yet, but the altcoins have. And how Ethereum was gonna rise some more along with some of the other coins and that the biggest pairing would be to Ethereum would be BTC to Ethereum, not USDT to Ethereum. Hearing myself say that, it's kind of funny because like, a year and a half ago, that is a foreign language to me. What, the, what in the world are you talking about? USDT paired to ETH or BTC paired to ETH. What in the world does that mean? That's where education comes in. <laughs> now, what used to look like Greek is, is simple now. So what is that, Jay Guillory? Hit BTC just started freezing people's accounts in light of January 3rd. Why, what's happening on January 3rd? I haven't heard about that day. What's, what's important about that? That is what, on Thursday? Let's see here. BCH USD technical indicators. Looking at the BCH USD daily and four hour charts on Bitstamp shows there have been some meaningful trend changes as explained in our last markets update. The two long-term and short-term simple moving averages were about to cross hairs. Today, the 100 SMA has climbed above the long-term, indicating some possible upswings ahead, and it did. It, it swung ahead. This is why learning how to read the chart, you can kind of predict what's gonna happen in the future. Gotta read the charts. The relative strength index chart shows uncertainty at negative 46, while the stochastic and MACD indicators show similar findings. Looking at order books ahead, we can see that bulls will meet resistance at the current vantage point and up until 190 to $225 per coin. On the backside foundation, so wait, 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 so it's saying once it reaches 190 to $225 BCH, and right now it's sitting at 165. So this can go up another $20. Then it's going to hit resistance. What does that mean? Well, I'll show you. 
we pull up um I'm looking at Poloniex here. And what was that trade pair? BCH to USD. Okay. USD, but, but on Poloniex, they don't have BCH. They froze that with the USD pair. Oh, at least I can show, well, I'll just show you what it means here. You got your buy orders and your and your sell orders, your walls. And you have your resistance. And the and the current price is always bouncing in between these two walls. But once it breaks past either one way or the other, it could do a run up until it meets the next resistance wall. So unfortunately, Poloniex does not have a pair with BCH ever since the fork, the split, but BTC does. So if I were to click on BTC and BCH, Bitcoin Cash is up 5%. So it's bouncing around here. It looks like a squeeze is going on. Slight separation. A lot of volume there. Look at that. It spiked up. That was just in the last 15, 15 minutes. And in the last uh, hour or so, it did a spike. It jumped up. Whoa. Well, the opposite is true. If this thing goes below a certain number, it's going to it could fall all the way down. So you want to want to watch that closely. Anybody that's trading on uh, Bitcoin Cash, it looks good right now, up 6%. But if it slides, it can pop bounce back down to here, these levels. All right, the hope for 2019 crypto market trend reversal. For those of you that's wondering, will this thing turn around anytime quickly? Overall, most traders know that the holiday lull may pick up soon as, as far as volume, but the bearish trends may not be over. Unfortunately, just like the myriad of nonsensical price predictions throughout 2018, there has been a ton of people who think they've called the bottom. Traditionally, cryptocurrency markets in January don't fare so well because of people selling for tax reasons and settling in of the uh, settling end of year purchases. Yeah, that if you go back the last nine years, January has never been a bull year for crypto. Another reason also is because of the, the new years for China does not happen until what, is that February or March or something. And so people are selling their coins there to prepare for that. And that's where traditionally most volume was coming out of Asia. So th this is going to be a sh should traditionally be a short uh, bull run. I mean a bear run. But traditionally, cryptocurrency markets in January don't fare so well because of people selling for tax reasons and settling end of the year purchases. However, usually after a long-winded year of bearish sentiment, sometimes certain markets reverse. On New Year's Eve, John Bollinger, the esteemed inventor of statistical chart characterization, tool Bollinger Band. Reminded traders and his Twitter followers for, of this example. Happy New Year, Bollinger said. Please keep in mind that there is a long tradition of what did poorly last year doing well the next. Good trading. So he is saying that it's over. That might be the case in stocks. But you got to go back. Last time crypto had a bearer like this, it lasted for two and a half years. We're only one year in. So take that with a grain of salt. All right, last article up for tonight. How institutional investors are changing the cryptocurrency market. Let's put that here. Happy New Year, Handy. Now, here's the great unknown. What will these institutional investors impact be on the market outside of manipulation that I personally believe is taking place? Institutional investors trading crypto gained ground in 2018 when a number of high profile players edging in and taking a seat at the table. Increased interest from larger investors may have played a part in supporting digital assets as well as distorting the market. 
There you go. Distorting the market. Last year, reports emerged that George Soros and the Rockefeller family were beginning to take positions in the emergent crypto asset class, according to Bloomberg. If, if, if I already know it's true, but let's say if that's true, then you're looking at the entire global financial establishment. So, you know, the, the people who really run the planet, the Rothschilds and, and crew, oh, they are all taking positions behind the scenes. The family's $26 billion Soros fund management was supposedly considered trading di digital assets. The Rockefeller family's VC arm, Vinrock, decided to take a different approach by partnering with CoinFund to assist entrepreneurs in launching blockchain businesses. Not to mention you've got the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation involved. You've got Berkshire Hathaway involved. You've got J.P. Morgan Chase involved. You've got IBM involved. Hmm. Mike Novogratz, the chief executive officer of Galaxy Investment Partners, said he sees first and second quarter 2019 as a period when more institutions will start to come into crypto. He also expects the crypto markets to turn bullish again in 2019. Says crypto is not a playground anymore. Previously, investors were hesitant to enter the crypto markets due to high volatility and lack of regulation. But this is changing, with large players starting to take positions. Stefan Niagu, co-founder of Digital Identified Management System Persona, said BTC attracted large players as the institutional investors saw BTC as an investment instrument. This helped the crypto market because it was not a playground anymore, but rather the sandbox of a limited group of people with money from a real economy being shifted to the crypto market. In 2018, over-the-counter market makers have thrived. So you see that while everybody else, meaning the holders, while the holders were riding the crypto coin all the way down as it came down, the institutional players were doing OTC stuff and they were thriving. Dave, there is no KGX coin. Unless there's another coin out there called KGX. <laughs> According to cryptocurrency research group Dior, Dior, institutional cryptocurrency trading on traditional exchanges has been diminishing in volume due to BTC being welcomed into major outfit portfolios this year. There has instead been a shift to OTC trading. During OTC market hours, there has seen an increase in BTC trading volume by 20% while Grayscale's Bitcoin investment trust volumes were down 35% in 2017 versus 2018 for the same period. It seems institutional traders might be shifting towards higher liquidity, OTC physical BTC markets. Another issue with the cryptocurrency market is low liquidity and its susceptibility to manipulation. The increased entry of institutional investors may have helped anchor the current market, and distort prices. I agree. Miyagu said, I doubt that this increased institutional investor interest will cause liquidity issues. I don't see any reason why the crypto market should be different than the stock market. As for distorting the prices, I don't think that they would see any big ripples, he added. Let's remember that the Mt. Gox trustee sold $230 million worth of Bitcoin in four months. And they did it using exchanges, not OTC desks. For the moment, the weight of these institutional players is not that big to send the BTC price down. Hmm. I don't know about that. The, 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 the price is almost at bottom right now. Could it go lower? Yes. It could go down to the thousands. In Asia, Hong Kong Securities and Futures Commission, their version of the SEC, has introduced new rules which limit crypto trading to institutional investors. Licensed portfolio managers and funds that invest more than 10% of their portfolios in virtual assets are required to obtain a license 
which means only qualified institutional investors will be allowed to invest in virtual asset portfolios, meaning people with money. Roger Lim of Singapore-based Neo Global Capital explains that crypto regulation in East Asia are still fragmented. However, further regulation will drive both governance and the mainstream adoption of cryptocurrencies. Lim said, as institutional investors, high net worth individuals and family offices continue to monitor and take cryptocurrencies seriously. And with regulators working to improve standards and guidelines for adoption, I expect that the market will mature in parallel. If the industry can continue to shift gears and direct its attention towards this narrative of growth, I think it's very likely that we will see a comeback in 2019. Cryptocurrency custody lies in safeguarding crypto assets. Scarcely a month goes by without an exchange hacking. That's another reason why you do not keep all your coins on exchanges unless you're trading at the time. Okay, that's important. Scarcely a month goes by without an exchange hacking, funds being lost, stolen, or compromised, with little hope or possibility of recovery. It is in the interest of any financial institution holding asset for another party to lower the risk of theft. According to the Bank of New York Mellon, there is increasing demand in the market for a traditional established custodian to provide custody of cryptocurrencies. There have been a new number of firms launching services to secure assets, and there have been, been reports of major banks testing and in some cases rolling out crypto custody solutions. Nomura and Intercontinental Exchange have announced plans, and sources state that other major banks such as J.P. Morgan, Goldman Sachs, and Bank of New York Mellon are exploring offerings. Introduction of custody, custody would also unlock large amounts of capital. There, it, here's, what, here's what this means in layman's terms. The wealthy are afraid to put a whole lot of money into the space because it's too much risky for it to get stolen or for a wealthy individual to forget their password or lose their keys. So they're not going to move that way until infrastructure is put in place. And that's what 2018 has been all about, building the infrastructure. Building, like, in other words, they want to know that they've got security, that, that their money's being insured. So they, they want the banks to be involved. Coinbase has received approval from New York regulators to form a custodial firm for cryptocurrencies. Previously, CEO Brian Armstrong has acknowledged this issue, stating that there is a $10 billion of institutional money waiting on the sidelines. And that the number one issue preventing these individuals from getting involved is a lack, I just said that, the lack of secure custodial services. All right, so that is the news for the day. Two crypto talks today for the first day of 2019. Very curious to see where this year leads us. Now, as when I did my the secret talk on Sunday. Do not worry or concern yourself over things that you don't have control over. We don't control the direction of crypto outside of our own personal engagement. You know, the more people engage, the more adoption is going to take place. But we don't have mass control on this. So I never base my future on hope. Only focusing on the things that we can control. The one thing we do know is that crypto is not going anywhere. It's here to stay, it is the future, and we're at the beginning. We can control our role in this space, how much we invest and how, much, how, how we're positioned to benefit. You need resources if you wanna play this game. The more resources you have, the better position you're going to be. The better, bigger crypto portfolio you're going to be able to build. The more crypto-based blockchain companies you can invest in but it takes resources. And if you have no resources, whatever, and you're starting off 2019, I would strongly encourage rule number one, education first. And that is why we have KGX. 
we are here to give you that education. And while you're learning, we're going to show you how to earn at the same time. Earn the resources. See, I don't buy Bitcoin. I earn Bitcoin. I earn it. What would an extra $20,000 be able to do for you? Let's say you have nothing right now. But by the end of January, you now had $20,000 going into February. What would you do with that $20,000? What if it was $10,000? What would you do with that $10,000? We can show you how to earn that within KGX and then use that for your investments, for your buying and holding, for your day trading, for whatever it is you want to invest in the crypto space. But you need the resources and money to do so. If you're serious and you're ready to go, get back whoever's showing you this live that I'm doing right now, or get back with me. It's a new year, it's a new beginning, you wanna get yourself started. There's a cost, as is everything in life. The cost is $300. If you balk at that, you're in the wrong space. Go back to your day job. That's the cost. We'll show you how to make that back in 24 hours, have money to put into your exchanges, and let's keep it moving. Picture this, guys. $10,000 in a trade account that you know, how to, you know what to do with, and you're able to average around 2% a day on your own trades, you doing it yourself, that's $6,000 a month. Now you've got your money making money for you instead of you going out there doing the hustling. So that should be a goal you should have written down. I need to get $10,000 to have in my trade account. $10,000. How do I get $10,000? Hey, you, let me use KGX to raise the money. All right, everybody, have a great day. I'll be back tomorrow morning or evening. I'll be back tomorrow morning for early morning crypto talk. Bitcoin, Brandon out. God bless. Good night. Bye-bye. And Happy New Year.